It's Feed by Gaming. Welcome back to my playthrough of the Soviet Union, my AKA tutorial series. Let's jump straight into the game, guys. So we're pushing them back into Korea right now. I don't think there's many divisions down here. No, there's not. I think what we'll do is we'll tell them to be aggressive. And you can see straight away, even though they don't have an attack plan because they're aggressive, they see an opportunity to attack, so they're going to attack anyway, regardless. This will also mean they'll attack quicker into an actual order that I've given them as well. Okay, it looks like they seem to be pushing in the south as well. They've closed down this pocket, and we're doing a lot, lot better than we did once before. Excellent. Let's get them to push into this province. Done. Grab these ones here. I'm holding shift and right clicking. Pause. And we've finished decryption. Encryption. So that's a year ahead. Uh, we could go for radar. Now radar is, is something you use for planes that increases detection. So therefore it increases the chance of detecting planes. Therefore shooting them down. We're not going to use planes, so that's... Well, we are going to use them later in the game, but not now. Okay, that's only 0.14 ahead, not 0.14 years ahead. So I think we're going to go for more production. Oh, I hit I hit enter there, so I'm using hotkeys again, I'm sorry. Confusing myself. Anyway, minus, unpause, there we go. Got to untrain myself for this tutorial series not to use hotkeys. Okay, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to close this pocket in the north. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a front line. Use the mouse to wheel over there. That's pretty much going to be all this territory. There you go. Select all these divisions. And then I'm going to click on assign. And and when they're in place, I'm going to go. In fact, I'm just going to go now. Okay, mechanize has complete. Okay, this is a crucial tipping point. Because this is the discovery of mechanize from motorize to mechanize. And as you can see, the stats are just insane. So, the maximum speed for motorized is 12, and the hardness is 10%, reliability 80. Don't worry about the reliability, they're all about 80 anyway. And you've got, you've got all the stats are there. But then if you go for mechanize, so your defense is going to, oh, there's no defense. Let's see, look, see if I can find an actual example of something that increases the damage by. No, I can't actually find an example. But trust me, mechanize is an improvement. The production cost is a hell of a lot higher. Oh, clicked on the wrong thing there. The production cost is a hell of a lot higher, but you get loads of benefits. If you have the production, there's no reason why you should not be going for mechanized. So what we're going to do is select this line of production and select on mechanized. Now what this means is instead of creating a new line of production at the top, I'm going to switch a line. So a line of these factories now are going to be assigned onto a new role. And the benefit of that is you don't have to start from the very beginning of your production efficiency. You'll lose a large amount of production efficiency, but not all of it. I click that. I've lost... 90%, so it's dropped down from 100 to 10%, where before it would have started about 2%. So, it's, I guess it's quite a big penalty, uh, but hey, it's, it's a lot better than it would have normally been anyway. Put it that way. Okay, so what are we producing? So we are building roads at the moment, and we are building forts. I think I want to build more factories. I'm just not happy how many factories we've got. So, left click, add those factories. And that'll do for now, I think. And then what we'll do is go to the bottom. We're going to hold shift and push all those to the top. There you go. All of them on the top now. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we have a new research slot. We researched mechanized, didn't we? These are still a bit too far ahead. My rule of thumb, if it's less than a year, and I don't have anything that I desperately need, I like to go for uh, I like to go for it. But if it's more than a year ahead, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do that. Okay, so we've got the um, uh, brigades. They're all research up to date. The tank's two years ahead. I don't want to do that. Uh, we could go for artillery. No, I think we're going to go for this one. I do want to phase out artillery. I do want to phase it out. But for the time being, we are using artillery. So why not use it to the maximum potential? Let's go for this research. So right now, let's look at logistics. We are behind by 2,200 pieces of artillery. And that's 84 days. That is really, really good. That is where we need it to be. And medium tanks are behind by 410 tanks. And it's 51 days behind. That is Perfect. That's where I needed to be. Anyway, back to the, Rus the, the Russian, the Chinese front, and we're going to see ourselves clear up this pocket in uh, Manchuria. The Chinese must love us for this. We've saved them. They've come from them the the brink of defeat, and we've uh, we're saving them now. China has loads of communism. We are pushing them towards communism.
that is the event there, Chinese Uprising. So when uh, China gets lots of communism, states from, the, from their state switch to... I've explained this really badly. Let me pause. Yeah, so when the Chinese uh, get large amounts of popularity of communism, uh, states within China will flip um, to communist China, which is a separate independent country. Because technically, quote unquote, the Chinese civil war is happening. So therefore, that's the reason why there are two entities of China within China. 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 We're going to make some orders out left clicking and holding shift. Go there. Go here. We're going to be really aggressive because right now all we can see right here is you can see this one division here. Oh, I might have to pause, pause, stop. Go here, go there. So we'll encircle them in this city. Okay, the SU-22 is complete, which is an artillery piece. And we are going to go for that as soon as possible. So that's the SU-122. So we're going to start making a few of those. Um, so there it is. It's the one with the artillery on it. We'll push that further to the top. I think we'll make one line of those. We are really behind on our production at the moment, but there are a few things we can pull off. I think we'll start pulling off some anti-tanks as we're not needing them as much. I think we'll take off a line of support support equipment too. We are low on tungsten, so let's import some more tungsten from where else? Where else? Of course, Portugal. Okay, research complete. Uh, I've got the artillery tanks. As I said, I don't really use those very often, but they are very, very good. They've got very high soft attack. Uh, what else can we research? So we've got infantry too far ahead for those. Brigades too far ahead. Tanks too far ahead. Artillery pretty much too far ahead. There's pretty much nothing we need to research now. So could, we could right now focus on air or navy. Or we could start researching something that's really far ahead. Oh, actually, tell a lie. No, we can research these production ones. So we can go for this one gives extra production in the cap. Now, I'm a, I am at 100% of production cap right now. So I'm thinking to myself, will that extra bit of production actually help me? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see if it actually goes above 100%. We'll see. It might actually be lost, but we'll find out. And you go. We've been surrounded them there. And now they've landed. We're going to help them out. There we go. Pushing them in, and now they've been encircled, and they're gone. Rip. Then what we'll probably do is click Edit and drag the front line over. Remember, when you are dragging the front line, you've got to click one of the bubbles and grab them over. Otherwise, it won't work. It looks like I'm dragging on nothing, but I am dragging on these little circular bubbles. This is letting know that there's units without a battle plan order. It just basically means it's a division that's not been given a battle plan order. And the reason why is because the battles are closing. So the order was a front line there to land in this province with an attack. And because the order is complete, there's nothing else for them to do. So that's the reason why they keep saying there's no battle orders. Because they literally have fulfilled the orders that I've given them. Holding shift again, moving over. Clicking, holding shift, moving over. Oh, the Japanese have landed in Korea again. The Japanese love their amphibious landings. Okay, gonna go five speed again. Grab those final provinces in Manchuria. And they're gone. Okay, pause the game. Gonna select all our divisions here, aside from you. Oh, no, it doesn't even matter anymore. So let's right click on the trash can icon. Click on OK to delete all orders. This guy doesn't need to be here anymore because the front lines move forward. We're pretty confident right now that we're beating them back, so it doesn't matter. So front line here, push into Korea once again. When you're there, just go. It's going to go full speed, press space to uh, resume the game. We've got more political power, which we're not going to use. The only one we can go for, everyone else has been purged, is this guy. Decisive battle plan. It gives extra capital attack and screen attack. Yet again, not going to talk about that. We'll worry about that later. All right, it has come to the stage now that I think we're winning. So let's pause the game. We are sending them loads and loads of stuff. So right now we're going to clear all and say, China, we're not sending you any more stuff, dude. You, you're winning this war. You don't need our stuff anymore. And that's pretty much it. We're going to get all the gear for ourselves now. And we are banking every single piece. 36, 30 days behind on artillery. 10 days behind on tanks. We are on top of our production. Atomic research is done. Going to pause the game. What can we research now? I guess we can go for the extra construction. Yeah, we'll do that. Go. Far East Fortifications is done. Let's pause the game. So we can go for Operation Zeta, which... 
So, through the blah, 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 blah. I'm not actually sure which one this one does, you know. I'm not sure what this does. It says it requires 200 pieces of infantry equipment, and it damages relations with us and Japan, and helps relations between us and China. Oh, but it damages relations with us and the Republic. Hmm, okay. Let's just see what this does. I've never seen this one before. It may have some kind of historical significance. There we go. All done. Select those guys again. Front line here. Push them back into this province. When you're ready, go. Now, I could, if I wanted to at this stage, I could manually move them if I wanted to just by clicking them and right clicking them where I choose. But to be honest with you, there's not a lot of point. Oh, wow, they're pushing into this province that was amphibious dropped on and now they're gone again. Okay. So even when you're strategically, uh, strategically redeploying, you still have some organization. You've got about one. So technically, you can, you can still attack if, a, if you, you've got like an overwhelming advantage. And there we go, we're done. All right, next one done. I guess at this point, I guess we create a front line here, a really small one, and then I guess maybe we head towards the coast. What I'd like to do as well, artillery's done. Okay, at this stage we could probably go for the better upgrades. I think I'm going to go for the improved guns. This is always a good one to go for early. So it's the improved guns from level 1, 2, 3. Well, technically it's basic 1, 2, and then 3. So we'll go for this one now. It's one year ahead, but it's just shy of a year, so that's doable. Uh, we are really, really, really on top of our research, so we don't need to worry about that. So logistics telling us that we are not producing... Uh, motorized, but the truck that we've got 23 trucks, 23,000 trucks. So we don't need to produce any more motorized. We've got so many, met so many of them stored and piggy bagged. We don't need to worry about that. It's also telling us that we are producing loads of different things that we don't have attached to our divisions. So that's understandable. We've, we're making mechanized, we're making anti tanks, uh, we're making artillery tanks. Uh, we, we don't have them assigned to divisions, but we will. So it's a good idea to piggyback a few of them, piggy bank a few of them, in stored, and then assign them when I have enough. And we'll see that in a moment, because we're going to make a modification to one of our divisions, and then we'll see that. So what we're doing now is we're pushing across the coast, and what we're going to try and do is grab as many ports as we can. What I want to do as well is adjust this front line. So I'm going to click on edit and drag it over. There we go. I want to keep them as close to the coast as possible. Close to the coast. There you go. They're moving the way through. I'm going to manually move them a little bit. Manually move them over. There we go. I'm trying my absolute best to try and create two provinces to push with. Because I don't want to make my front line too narrow because they can encircle us then. If they could push a troop through here, they could close us off, which I definitely don't want to do. We can take this city. Ireland has joined the Allies. It's getting serious now, guys. Potato has joined the Allies. Okay, yet again, we've got the same issue as before. The front line's gotten too big. Therefore, we haven't got like a very narrow spearhead, so we're going to move down. And also then to move it, take it off, we're going to move here. And then adjust the front line by staying close to the coastline. Yep, that's perfect, actually. That's exactly what I want. Probably could make the front line a little bit narrower, actually. What we're going to do is we're also... Ooh, there's, there's one tank there that's not assigned. So we click that guy. He's not assigned an order. And we're going to assign him to this front line. So there you go, 10 divisions. So I said to you guys, oh, he was here. That's the reason why he was sitting on this province. That's okay. Oh, the Japanese have landed in Korea once again. Okay, Operation Zeta is complete. Yet again, not really sure what that's done. No idea. We'll, we might find out in a moment. It might be in an event that fires up for Japan or China. We can annex Tanu Tuva. I think we're definitely going to do that. Yep. Get rid of Tanu Tuva. Okay, I'm a bit nervous in the north here because we have like a situation where they're pushing us back and I don't like that. So I think we're going to make a little attack to widen this front a little bit. Yeah, they're winning there. Okay, concentrated industry is done. Pause the game. Uh, we're going to go for... Actually, there's nothing else to research here. Uh, we could go for these ones, which is called excavation, which gives extra resource gain. We don't need to worry about that. We're the Soviet Union. We have an abundance of resources. Okay, we're going to go for support equipment, which gains extra breakthrough in defense, which is always good for everything. So 
let's research that one now, and that improves pretty much all your divisions in the game, so that's always useful. Yet again, I'm seeing we're forming another issue here, so I'm just going to clear this up if it becomes a major problem. There's a, there's a lake here, so that'll create a nice little front line for us. Fire Brigades is done. I'm going to pause the game do that again. Fire Brigade. Then we're going to go for Backhand Blow. Probably the, the weakest research of all the Blitz, of all the Mobile Warfare. Because it just gives an extra... Um, gives an extra... What's the correct term? I can't think of the correct term now. It gives an extra battle order. A ta extra tactic. That's the correct term. So I didn't really talk about tactics. So let me pause the game. So when you're in a battle, there are tactics that are used. So... There is every tactic, and actually I'm talking universally, I'm not actually sure this is true, but as far as I'm aware, every tactic has a counter tactic. So our tactic that we've deployed is called attack. And what they've done is the Chinese general, smart that he is, sorry, the Japanese general, field marshal, he's not, <laughs> he's not a general, he's a field marshal, uh, has countered it. He's gone for counter attack, and that has killed our, our tactic, but they've gotten a bonus defense at 25% damage. Even so, they, they're actually countering our attack perfectly. They still aren't winning because that 25% extra attack is nothing. We'll, we'll look at some other battles in a moment to show you um, other tactics that are planned. But every time you attack, you're using a tactic. And there's an opportunity for every tactic that you use to get counter tactic counter tactic Counteracted. Alright, let's just pause the game. There's a few battles happening. No, there's not. Yep, there's a few there. So there's one here. Uh, we use shock, which gives an extra defender tactic damage of minus 20, 25%, so it reduces their def attack damage. And they've used backhand blow. So these have not countered each other. Um, they, they're basically using those tactics at the same time. They don't have a, there isn't a counteraction of those tactics. Another one here, we're using attack, and they're using ambush. So it gives an extra 5% attack. But the others, this one reduces their attack by minus 25%. The whole concept is, is two things. One, do you have extra tactics that you've researched through your land doctrines? So if you go down the land doctrines, you get extra tactics as you go down, like splits, elastic defense, defender, whatnot. If you've got extra tactics you can use, you have an extra potential layer of advantage. And also, to make sure you are, all, you are more likely to counteract someone else's tactics, um, you can get more re re uh, reconnaissance. There you go, reconnaissance three, which is added by uh, the, re the, re the recon teams. So the more reconnaissance you've got, the more likely you can add an advantage on the tactics in that particular battle. In most cases, you, you always want a tactic advantage. There's no reason why you wouldn't want the tactic advantage. So in that circumstance, just make sure you get lots of recon. If you don't have, if, if it comes down to you don't have a production advantage, if you don't have a manpower advantage, if you don't have a division advantage, having a tactical advantage is going to be free. It's going to cost nothing. Well, other than the fact that it costs for a recon division, put it that way. Okay, assembly line pro production is complete. I think it's time to go for some extra support battalions. I think we're going to go for the recon. We talked about reconnaissance before. This adds an extra plus two reconnaissance. Having that a little bit early is going to be useful because that will give us an extra advantage in combat. Okay, so we're going to make this front line smaller again just before the river and we're about to move in so let's continue. Let's push forward and they're moving in. Not much we really need to do here. Oh, are they pushed forward again? They have. Yeah, they have. They pushed forward again. Wow. Oh, they've got extra troops on the front here. I'm not holding them out very long, though. Okay, we've made a really nice, nice push here. What we're trying to do is, like, encircle them into, like, a, a central pocket in the middle of China. And we can do that by grabbing all of their ports. It's going to be tricky because there's about, wow, seven or eight ports around the south, so it's not an easy feat, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, I'm going to grab this port here. Oh, they made a landing here. Oh, they're making another landing here. I'm trying to do an amphibious assault. I keep saying amphibious assault. The AI does it quite a lot as Japan, but 
we're going to do some later in the game, so we'll talk about that more when it happens. Okay, I think we're going to go for some more Engineer 3. Now, Engineer 3 is particularly good because it gives a boost to attacking over rivers and a defense, so that's always nice. It gives extra entrenchment as well. Attacking over rivers is kind of nasty, so if it softens that blow a little bit, which is always nice. Okay, we're going to stop now, guys. Stop. Okay, I'm really happy with how this line's gone, so we're going to pause the game, cancel the orders. Oh, what do you know? The Chinese on their own have cleared them back. Chinese too strong. China number one. Yep, that's a new push. We are going to go for this one this time. We're going to move the front line over. I am doing this very quick, but by this stage, guys, you should have practiced this a thousand times. Have you been doing your homework? Have you? There we go. All right, go. Okay, missing equipment for motorized too, but we still have 22 trucks available, so who cares? Okay, resume the game. We're going to make sure we assign all of them to this plan. Yep. You can see if they're not assigned, they have like a yellow, uh, you have a, uh, a red exclamation mark. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we talked before about how the People's Republic of China gains more states inside of China. And it does that by gaining more popularity of communism. So as communism is increasing, see the Republic of China is expanding. They didn't have this province before, but now they do. I believe they only start off with this one. So they've grabbed that one, they've grabbed that one, and they've grabbed one. The growth of communism within China. It is getting larger and larger by the day. Okay, we have uh, click on our army. We're going to go. And we're going to create what we plan to do, this little push along the coastline to grab all their ports. If we, if this plan is successful, we all need to grab this one port and then we're done. Okay, the game just notified me, supply issue then, but then it disappeared. I guess we it had a supply issue for a brief moment, then it's gone. The fall of Cairo, okay. I guess uh, the Axis are pushing into British Egypt. Yep. Wow. So the Germans are doing a lot better than they did before. They've uh, taken out France, Belgium, all better looks are all gone. We have Annex. Annex Tuva. Tanu Tuva is gone. Does that mean we get their divisions? Yes, we do. Oh, no, 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 we don't. No, these are new divisions, these ones. These are ones have just, we've created just. Okay. So, Annex Tanutuva is complete. The next one is War with Japan. I'll be honest with you guys, we don't want to do that just yet. But we are going to do that eventually anyway. So, I think we'll go for Socialism Realism. Just for the extra political power that we will never use. Okay, what else we need to do? I'm trying to do everything kind of historical at the moment. I don't... Right now, I could if I want to, because I've got so much excess political power. I could convert the British Raj to communism. I could convert the Middle East to communism. I could try and convert some of the Axis to communism. But I don't really want to do that because it's not historical. I'm trying to keep it as historical as possible. Soviet Union, Annexes, Tanu, Tuva. So if the AI was smart, and I'm not saying they're not smart, they have moments of brilliance, they would try and push into here and close off into this pocket. But at the moment, I think they've got their hands full, so that's probably the reason why they're not doing that. Japan has cancelled their non-aggression pact with us. Okay, they know they're interfering with their war with, with China, and they're upset about that. So what they're doing now is they're cancelling the non-aggression pact. They're giving the impression that they're going to attack us. We're going to just narrow that front line there. They're giving the impression they're going to attack us because they've... Uh, They've cancelled our non-aggression pact. It gives the impression that they are readying for war. Okay, we're pushing in now. Pretty much without much resistance at all. I'm just trying to, as quickly as possible, uh, grab these ports. If I can do that as soon as I can. We no longer have the molotov Ribbentrop pack. pact. Okay, so the non-aggression pact between Nazi Germany... And the Soviet Union has ended. So what does that mean, guys? What happens next? Tell me what happens historically next from this point. Could it be Operation Barbarossa? Hmm, maybe. Anyway, I've just cancelled that order. Narrowed the front line. We are going to go for this port. If we can grab this port, all of this will be out of supply. So that will give us a massive advantage. Be aware, guys, that 
when a war occurs and I have volunteers sent to another country, all of the volunteers will return back. You may see, who knows, maybe not, maybe so, but who knows, the Germany may declare war on us soon. And if that happens, all of these volunteer forces will need to be pulled back, as you'll see soon. Anyway, so I think we probably should pause right now, and we should check out our main army. Now, to be honest with you, these troops don't actually serve any purpose anymore, because this area is already held, isn't it? So maybe we'll pull these off in a little while. Anyhow, we also have these troops here, so we can grab Sophia if we need it, which we probably will, actually. Yeah. Okay, that's good. They're actually in a good place. So what I'll do is, if in the event that the Axis declare war on us, if we will say immediately deploy your plan. So this means we're not at war with each other, so the plan's not going to actually happen. But if the war declares, the plan will initiate immediately. In that case, we need to be prepared. We need to be on our toes. Okay, so there is also another issue here as well. Okay. Um, Romania. So... If we click on the axis, we can see that Germany and the Hungarians are in a alliance together, as well as the Bulgarians. Romania, on the other hand, is not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this army, assign it to a general. I'm going to go for Ivan Konov. Konov. And we have, at the moment, we have claims on these territories. So what we're going to do is we're going to eat them up. So we're going to grab all the claims on these territories and say we're going to justify war against them. We do have one on Romania as well, but we'll not worry about that for now. Anyhow, so we're going to cancel the order they've got, which is just to hold these provinces. And then we're going to assign a front line here, and then we're going to do some kind of sweeping attack northwards. Um, for the most part, I don't think we need to worry about this front, to be honest with you. Um, no, I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, we are going to grab this army as well. Assign a general, which is the, uh, an admiral. Uh, which is this guy at level 4. He's good. Sell him to patrol this region. So this region is now patrolled. That means they'll try and hunt down and grab any forces they can. Uh, why have you guys not joined up? Join up. Have we got another fleet elsewhere? So I click on the navy. And there's four fleets. There's one here. One here. Oh, this is the one here. Put these two together. Okay, well, I think we'll leave those ones there, actually, now I think about it. Yeah, we'll leave those there. Okay, resume the game. Uh, we're going to go back to the Chinese front. I'm going to grab these. Let me grab four divisions here. Let's just pause. You shouldn't really play on five speed, just to give you the heads up. On five speed, more things are more likely to go wrong. I'm going to hold shift and go for this port. Alright guys, this is the pocket of pocket. This is the god pocket. Aha! Latvian ultimatum. Send them on the ultimatum. So we're basically saying that you should be incorporated into the USSR. That's what we're saying to them. And uh, we're going to see if they accept our ultimatum now. Do you accept... Os Estonia! I pause for a second. Accept our ultimatum. You should be part of the Soviet Union. I think the reason why these states, we have claims on them, is because these were previously part of the Russian Empire. And Stalin, in his uh, aggressive hawk manner, believes these should be also incorporated into the USSR. USSR. I've realized as well, we've not actually declared war on Finland as well. Soviet Union annexes Latvia. Well, they are socialist now. Lithuania, send them the ultimatum. We have now annexed them. Estonia submits. Estonia is gone. Lithuania is the only one left. Will they join the glorious USSR? We have joined. We're going to add a few more extra factories. Let's add those factories on. And we're actually up to date on artillery as well. What we'll do is we'll add some motorized too. Not a lot, just a few, uh, just for the instance if we need them, because we do. You do use motorized for support grades as well. We will save you from capitalism. And they have been annexed. Well, there you go, guys. They are the the best victories of them all. The ones that are bloodless. Just expanding that front line so it covers the north now. Okay, so the final one. 
the final final one is Finland. So grab those divisions there, push them on that front line. We're going to create another front line here. We're going to split them in half twice, so two divisions. Oh, actually, no, it creates a full front line here. Let me just cancel this off. Oh, right, okay, so you can create this all as one front for one front line. Okay, we'll do that then. And then I want you to take Helsinki and also take this province as well. Sign everyone here. Tell them to go ASAP. And we're going to do exactly the same thing to Finland as we did to the Baltic states. Yeah, guys, I am aware this is historically broken because this is not actually when it happened. This happened in about the 19... 1938, 1939, these events. Actually, it was 1940, wasn't it? The fin the fin the Winter War, I think. I think it was. Okay, so what can we assign? So maybe we should go for the artillery maxed out. That's good. Uh, what else? So this is telling us that we're justifying a war against Finland. Okay, we're behind on Tugsten right now. So let's get some more Tugsten from where else? That's right, Portugal. We're behind on rubber too, so let's get a bit more rubber from the United Kingdom. Aha! We've done it, boys. We have created the God Pocket. The pocket to end all pockets. One pocket to rule them all. Socialism, realism is done. Okay, so we can go for aviation court, I suppose. Not something we'll actually do, though. Hmm. I don't really want to go for that one, because that's going to upset the allies. And I don't want to do that. No, I don't really want to do that. Oh, wow, that's a way of turning the allies towards communism. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's go for aviation cult. Oh, two divisions left. Let's get them, let's get them wrapped up. Let's cancel this attack order. Stop. Right click. End. There you go, guys. The one scrape pocket has been dissolved into nothing. All right, guys. There's pretty much not much need for these anymore, is there, really? Uh, these eventually are going to get returned once we uh, declare war on Japan, which eventually we will do. So we'll just keep them hanging around for the time being. This is pretty good, though, because we've managed to build their experience up, gain lots of army experience as well. So get all the fruits of the, uh, the fighting. Anyway, let's improve this artillery. So let's make a custom variant of artillery. So... So I always like to boost the reliability. We can also make the artillery gun bigger as well. And with this, I think we'll bring that down and bring that up. Yeah, that's perfect. Soft attack boost 13, max speed reduction. Uh, pause. Send the ultimatum to Finland, yes. And if you know guys, the ultimatum against Finland did not go as well against the Baltic states. The Finnish did not agree, but let's find out. The feed, one, two, two. So what we're going to do now is we are going to expand our tank division. And what we're going to do that is by adding on some artillery. Artillery, artillery. Oh, that adds an extra three. Interesting. So maybe we need to make the tank division a little bit smaller. There we go. So three lots of medium tanks, two artillery tanks, and four motorized. So I think what we're going to do is also replace our motorized with mechanized. I'm not sure if we can, we can replace them all, but we'll replace as many as we can. So when you make an adjustment to a division template, if you hover over the save, it tells you how much you have. So, to make this change, we need 8,800 mechanized. We only have 651. That's a big concern. And also, we need medium artillery pieces. We need, we need 1,760, and we only have 429. So that's a big concern. But the good news is I have told them to send all the reinforcements to the Chinese volunteer front first. So in that circumstance, that they, these guys who are actively fighting will be able to take advantage of those extra improvements. Okay, let's attack. Uh, I think we'll grab this. Go here, go here, and go. So as you can probably see, the strength of these divisions is low, is because they need mechanized. Gain conk. So the Finnish have rejected our glorious ultimatum. Boo! And it's time to declare war on the Finnish. I think what we'll do is we'll grab these divisions and add them on. This is this guy, and we'll add them on. There you go. Twenty-four divisions, all assigned. 
Assign. Go. We'll wait them to get into position. Finland rejects the Soviet demands. Our glorious offer was thrown in our face. Absolutely disgusting. Let's just select the divisions again. Assign them. I just want to make sure everyone's assigned. 24 divisions. Yep. And we're almost into position. And when you're ready, boys, we are going to attack and we're going to punch into them. Is this all the divisions that we need? Let me just pause. Yep, that's all the divisions. And that's it's got some infantry built in too, into there as well. And then we're going to attack. All right, guys. I'm going to end the episode here. Thanks for watching. Remember to comment below with anything you think I may have done wrong or anything that I may have explained really badly or anything you're just confused about and you'd like me to fill in. Please drop a comment. Also, like, guys, if you did enjoy it. And I'll stop that off as well. Remember to subscribe. Guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.